Johns and everybody that is out there in, in uh, cyberspace, I guess, on the internet. We are, um, this is our first effort in broadcasting live streaming the service. Last week we recorded the service on Saturday and then you could go view it at your leisure on Sunday, but this seems like this is our new normal, at least for a while, that we can not gather as a church, but we can uh, gather a handful of us and hopefully bring the church, bring the worship to you uh, that is hopefully inspiring and uplifting. Uh, it is essential for us as Christians um, to be worshiping people. So good morning to you. Again, thank you to Rick Spalin, who has put in many, many hours getting this ready. And while YouTube, as I said in my email, YouTube has somewhat cooperated, it seems like YouTube is very busy and sometimes things get slow. So if we have any issues, just bear with us. This still has to work. We still have to work some things out. But again, thank you to him for, for everything he's doing to get this ready. Again, thank you for the potters and the hobs and Larry Ford upstairs who is uh, who are going to bring us some worship and song and help us to sing along. As I said last week, I hope you will take every opportunity to make this a, uh, a worship service as normal for you or uh, as possible. You might want to stand and follow the props that I give you. You might want to just be sitting in your, the comfort of your living room or sunroom or today the bar room, I guess, and um, enjoying Enjoying the worship. We are, again, uh, glad we can do this. This, as I said, seems like our new normal for however long. Just one other announcement on Tuesday night, um, this coming Tuesday and the following Tuesday, Tina and Jason will be collecting food. There's already some food out in the uh, narthex for the group in Baltimore. Um, so if you've got some food between 6 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. this Tuesday, and the next Tuesday, um, we'll be in the parking lot so you can drop your food off to us then. So if you've got some food or if you're going to make a run to the grocery store, please uh, buy some extra so we can help some folks out in Baltimore. With those announcements, I invite you to stand. And I believe Rick was able to get the words of the service, the order of the service beside the video. I can't see it from here, but I believe he's got that. So you may be able to follow along or perhaps you printed the service out. But we begin our service with the hymn, Come Down Fountain of Every Blessing.
lives by sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then come unto God's presence today with penitent hearts and minds, asking for His grace and mercy in our lives, Silent confession, reflection, meditation on those things that we need to give to God today. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we freely admit that sin in our lives is troubling. Just when we think we have conquered one sin, another seems to become a persistent challenge. We have sinned against you in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. We have done what we should not have done, and we have failed to do what is expected of us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, strengthen us in our daily walk to the last of our life. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us all say together. Let us say together our entry this morning. I believe I am a child of God, not because of what I have done, but because of who He is. I believe I am sinful. I have within me the echo of my fallen nature, and I fall short of living fully and completely as I was intended. I believe that I cannot earn what God wants to give. My God's gift of grace through faith. I believe that he has sent Jesus as an atoning sacrifice for my sins, so that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. I believe Jesus died and rose again for me, and his death and resurrection are my only way to forgiveness. I believe God made him who had no sin to be sin for me, so that in him I might become the righteousness of God. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ or come unto him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, and made of me a new creature. I believe that when I am filled with myself, I fall. And when I humble myself, God lifts me up. I believe that when I lift my voice and my prayers, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children, and provide for us all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may hardly acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Old Testament reading comes from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. This is the word of the Lord. God. The epistle reading comes from the third chapter of Philippians. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, excuse me, St. Luke, chapter 10, beginning at verse 38. Glory to you, O Lord. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. And please be seated for our sermon hymn. Hymn number 738, if you have the Lutheran service book, Lord of All Hopefulness.
these are indeed unusual, crazy even circumstances for us. A few months ago, none of us would have ever imagined that this is the way life would be, not just for us, but around the world. It is something to think about. There are many changes going on in life. I have seen many changes, and I'm sure you have in your lives seen many changes as well. Whether it was employment, moves, um, children coming and going, growing up, leaving the house for college, or getting married. Many changes in life, perhaps there have been some changes in income in your lives. We've endured national threats throughout um, throughout uh, our years. Some of you all remember the Cuban Missile, Missile Crisis. Some of you all remember the crash of the stock market in October of 87. I could recite many of the TWA uh, uh, hijacking, the bombings in Lebanon. We've had many, many challenges and threats and many changes in our lives. That's one thing we can count on is change. And with that change is fear and anxiety. And I think we're living that today. It seems difficult to stay calm. It is for me. When I see the news, read the article, my emotions are touched, our relationships are changed. We can't be together on Sunday or gather during the week like we used to. We are concerned about our physical health. We're concerned about our spiritual health. We're concerned about our budget and our retirement and so many things. Things have changed much in these last months. And I don't need to tell you how strange and even awful this is. None of us would have thought several months ago that the two words together, social distancing, would have been a good thing. But now it is. We would have thought that was strange to be promoting social distance. But there is real sickness and there is death. And we are concerned. In many, in many ways, this is uncharted territory for us all. You've probably heard the words deja vu, right? Deja vu means something like, I've seen this before, or I feel like I've been here before. A friend of mine would call this a bougie day experience. We've never seen this. We have no idea how to react. We don't know what's gonna happen. This is the furthest thing from deja vu. Maybe bougie day does give us a good sense of this. Last night I walked outside and I uh, was letting the dog out and I gave a listen and since I live on Baldwin Mill Road, normally I will hear some cars going up and down the road and it was so eerily quiet. It really struck me. I didn't hear dogs barking, I didn't hear trucks, I didn't hear cars. I heard, I guess they were frogs or some animal out there. That's it. It was eerily quiet. So our lives have taken many turns and changes. It is an unknown future. We don't know when this will end. We don't know how bad it's going to be. We don't know who's going to get sick. We don't know who is going to die. We have friends and family members, many of us who are dealing with this firsthand. The changes in our lifestyle, it seems almost pale in comparison to the reality of the sick and the dying and our doctors and nurses and hospitals and first responders answering the call in a way I'm sure they never imagined either. There are so many questions for us, we don't know where to begin. There are the possible changes compared to several months ago, we don't know what the future will be like. But we know it. This is what we must stand on. 
the one thing that never changes is God's love for us. The unchangeable one, our God, all over Scripture as He has revealed Himself in the Old, Old Testament and the New Testament, as God has revealed Himself, He has revealed His love and His care for us over and over and over. Unchanging love for us. In His Son, Jesus Christ, He showed how much He loves us and cares for us, that He wants us to be with Him forever. And while he, uh, Jesus had came and taught us how to, to follow God, to live as God, we know through his son we are saved. And we also know that God has sent his very Holy Spirit to be our guide, to be our uh, that loving and caring God, comforting us. God's very spirit is with us. The unchangeable one, God. And all of the changes and all of the challenges and all that life throws at us, especially today, God is the constant for us. And then there's our need for worship. God has put that need in us, that yearning for us to be together and to worship Him, to acknowledge Him. His goodness, His greatness, His unchangeableness, His constants in our lives. The God in three persons that we come, that trinity that we come to worship. It is food for our soul. Amen? Amen. 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 And we need that. And it seemingly has been stripped away from us in ways that we have known since we were young, since we were coming to church as young toddlers and growing up in the church, perhaps, or maybe just coming to church recently, it is something that has become so important for us, and it is seemingly ripped away from us. It sustains us, our worship of God. It strengthens us, our worship of God. It nourishes us, our worship of God. It grounds us, our worship of God. Do yes, we're experiencing many changes, many questions, many concerns, many needs, but we know. We know. And we need to be reminded, all of us, that God is with us. That that certainty is essential for us, seemingly, especially now. God is with us. So I didn't go with the lessons appointed for this uh, fifth Sunday of Lent. I chose some different lessons because I wanted to look at um, uh, that, that need that we have. That need for God that he has put inside each of us. That need for worship, but also what is, is so strong for us through the scripture is that trust in God. So if we look at Psalm 27 very quickly, we can see that if this is the way God is, if, it, if he is light and he is salvation and he is the stronghold of life, as David says, and David has this strong need to trust him, we can trust him. Why fear? Why should I be afraid? David says. Then in verses 4 and 5, David says he seeks to dwell in the house of the Lord, to dwell with him forever, now and then. You see, there's David, that great king, that great uh, leader of the nation of Israel that they hold up so strongly, who says, I have a need to be with God forever, and I shall not be afraid, because he is the stronghold life. He's the stronghold of your life. God's got you. God's got me. He's got my back. He's got my front. He's got my sides, top to bottom. In the day of trouble, David says, God is there. And I thought that psalm was so important for us. You can read the later verses where David adds a prayer 
acknowledging God, looking for his help. In the day of trouble, God is here. And then those first, those few uh, verses in Philippians from Paul, that letter to the Philippians where Paul is so excited that the church in Philippi is, is following Jesus, is worshiping together, is gathering together. And Paul says, listen, after all that I've been through, I press on towards the call, the upward call of God and Jesus. And those verses in Philippians seemed important for me and for us to know that in all Paul endured, and you've heard, I'm sure, throughout the years, and you've heard me say as well, go back to 2 Corinthians 11 and listen to Paul as he gives us an idea of all of something with some of the things that he had to endure with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews forty lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea on frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers. Toil and hardship through many a sleepless night in hunger and thirst, often without food and cold and exposure and apart from other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. I'm sure you've heard that before. And you know all that Paul endured. But he says in his letter to the Philippians that in all of that he presses on to the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus. 
being or doing. That's not the point I want us to get out of that. Here's what one scholar says about this lesson as he sums it up. But we must not cartoon the scene. Martha to her eyeballs in soap suds, Mary pensively on a stool in the den, and Jesus giving scriptural warrant for letting the dishes pile high in the sink. If we censure Martha too harshly, she may abandon serving altogether. And if we commend Mary too profusely, she may sit there forever. There is a time to go and do. There is a time to listen and reflect. Knowing which and when is a matter of spiritual, knowing which and when is a matter of spiritual discernment. If we were to ask Jesus which example applies to us, Martha or Mary, his answer would probably be yes. Being and doing are essential. We can't separate the two. We can't say one is better than the other. And so why did I choose this lesson? Well, what does Jesus say to Martha as she comes to him to complain about her sister? Martha, Martha, you are troubled and anxious about many things. You see, as Martha brings her concern to Jesus, he focuses on what she's focused on, the anxieties and the troubles. And for me, that's the lesson now. Because I am that way. I am Martha. Not necessarily serving or doing, but I'm anxious and I am troubled. How can I? How can we, given all that's going on today, not be? Our world is turned on its head. There are too many questions. There's too much uncertainty. We are reminded, I'm reminded, I need to be there. To trust. To be with Jesus now. Yes, I'm busy around the house trying to do some things. I have to be busy to pass the time. But I have to remember to not let the anxieties and the troubles overpower the need to be with Jesus. For me, that's the lesson. Martha, Martha, you are troubled and anxious about many things. But Mary has chosen that which cannot be taken away. I need to make sure that I'm doing the being and trusting God in Christ to see me, to see us all through this with health and safety. So that's the lesson from, for me today from Mary and Martha, from David and from Paul. This day, this time is filled with so many unknowns. We don't know what's going to happen. How will life change with all of this? How long will this last? If this is our new reality of worship, is it enough for us? I think we have to make it enough for us. Yes, the news is heartbreaking. The stories are heartbreaking. And I could spend all of my day, and all of my days, quite honestly, worrying, and with what ifs, it's my nature to worry, so I have to be very careful with that. Jesus commends Mary for being with him. Jesus reminds Martha to be with him, and to let go of the troubles and the anxieties. And while we can't fully do that, that's a hard thing to do. We need to be reminded, I need to be reminded, to take some time to pray, to read, to be with Jesus, and to know, in no uncertain terms, that God is with us. More people will die. 
more people will get sick, perhaps friends, perhaps family members. We will be anxious, hurt, and troubled. This may last longer than we'd like. But one thing is necessary, Jesus says, to be with him, to trust, to come together as we can, to let this worship be enough for us now, and to await that glorious day when we can worship together again and share some coffee and tell some stories. David says God is the stronghold of his life. God is the stronghold of our lives. Paul presses on towards the upward call of God in Christ Jesus no matter what happens to him, he presses on. And Jesus says, our souls need nourishing and feeding. Spend some time with God in prayer. We have that need to worship. Our Lord has put it inside us. We need that nourishing to be with him now more than ever. And I would say, we would say, Lord, we trust you. We trust you to safely see us through. We need you, Lord, more than ever. And Lord, we are looking to you in all things, as David and Paul and so many others have done as well. Amen. Amen. Now, as you are able, please stand and let us join together and do say the Apostles' Creed, that ancient affirmation of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Now let us pray, and we'll have some additional time as we pray silently. Or at home, you might want to pray out loud, and we'll have time for this, but let us now pray. Lord God, we know that you are sovereign. We know that you are unchangeable, and you are the very ground of our being, Lord God. We look to you. We need you, we trust you, and we look to you for help. Lord, I would pray, especially, you be with researchers and scientists to find a cure, an antidote, whatever it's called, for this COVID-19 virus. Lord, that you be with the doctors and nurses and those in hospitals and those first responders who are at greater risk than we are. Lord, keep them healthy and safe. Lord, I pray for our world that we heed our leaders wherever we are and whatever decisions they make, Lord, to help this virus die and go away. And Lord, those, for those who are sick, for those in hospitals even today, that may be clinging to life, show your mercy, Lord. Be with them. Be with their families. Lord, we look to you in all things and trust you in all things. And I invite you now to take a moment to offer your prayer silently to God.
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Lord, may your peace be with us this day. And now let us join together in that prayer our Savior taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Go forth, filled with God's love. Go under God's mercy, knowing that when you are faithless, He is faithful, and that when you fail, He can redeem your failure. All things are possible for Him. And He will keep you strong to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now our closing hymn is Just As I Am. Let us joyfully sing together to end our service.
right now we're working with the women in the group. So thank you again, again, Rick Stalin, for getting us to this point. Obviously, there's some more work that needs to be done. We'll work on that. Again, thank you for the Hobbs and the Potters and for Larry Ward being here. This is our new reality of worshiping online, whether it's recorded or whether it's live stream. Uh, we will um, be taking the huge work, work this week to get this just, just right, right because we don't know how long this is going to be. To be. So, so uh, we are, we are uh, patient, patient because that's because all, that's we, all can we can do these days, days is to be patient. Be patient. Um, um, we know that know God, God is with us. With us. We hope you, we hope you will you read those lessons and follow those lessons and refer to them, the lessons that were read in the message. I refer, I refer to, to them. them. This coming this Tuesday, 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 the following Tuesday, Tuesday as well, well at 6 o'clock, from 6 to 6.30, 6 30, we'll, we'll, we will be we'll gathering, gathering food in the parking lot, lot to take down to the to the, the Sand Sand area. area. So, so if you, you can, can have some food, food or if you're going to go to the grocery store, please pick up some more food for us and we'll have that then in the 6 o'clock to 6.30 in the parking lot. Again, Again, God bless, God bless you. you. Stay, stay safe, stay healthy. healthy. And, and if you need anything, anything please call 410 877 God bless you.